Today we're going to learn a little bit about pipes and how we can keep them flowing smoothly. And we're also going to learn about gas reservoirs or liquid reservoirs and how we can use that to average out the temperature of the entire loop. Now this is a spin-off of a video that I was trying to record here based on Manson's re, uh, question. And his question is, would it be better to submerge the tanks inside some fluid to cool them down? You could use them to regulate the temperature of everything. Well, I was testing that in a video the other day. And the weird thing I found while testing this video here is that the liquid inside of these gas reservoirs is actually not impacting the temperature of the tank or the gas around it. Even though you can use the gas around it, if it's chlorine, to disinfect what's inside the tank. Now this is actually a direct response to what I was doing in the, my last Ultimate Automation Challenge where I made this little pre-cooling kind of loop right here, which is just an idea. You know, we could either use the liquid or I can use kind of my cold hydrogen here. Main thing is I wanted to drop the temperature of the gas that was coming into my system because it's up there at 250 degrees Celsius way up there. However, I don't think that's all that necessary based on what I'm learning today. All right, so let's take a look at my example here. So this is a cooling loop and it's using a gas reservoir. And inside of there, I have a bunch of oxygen and I also have this crazy contraption up here. Now, a little bit of forewarning, a lot of cooling loops can be very, very simple. It could just be a length of pipe that goes from one spot to the next spot. And then you throw like a bridge in there that gives it a direction and the gas just flows around and around. And as long as it's cool or hot on one side and you have another spot on the other side, you can transfer the thermal energy between the two areas. And that's really all you need most of the time. This is one example to where we might, it might be a unique thing. I'm not exactly sure where you're gonna use it, but it's one more idea for the noggin. And it's also a good example of different things we can, you know, how we can flow pipes around without them hesitating and the gas is going back and forth and all that crazy stuff that we end up getting into, especially once your systems get very, very complicated. So as I was working through Mason's recommendation over there, I ended up going down a very deep rabbit hole and ended up creating this, this contraption. And <laughs> the scenario is, is, is what I have laid out over here on the left. I did not do it successfully. I had to go to sleep and think about it for a while. <laughs> Anyhow, um, the, the, this is madness. But the idea behind this, let me just give you the idea. So we fill this area over here on the left with steam or, or just whatever gas, right? And you have a gold volcano and what you're doing is you're cooling down the stuff that's coming out of this volcano so quickly that it just ends up a chunk of metal. So you can see right here we have gold. We don't actually have to dig anything up. If we do have to dig anything up, at least the equipment won't be overheated and melted. So you can kind of just kind of keep that temperature down and then you can just sweep it up, right? So we're taking all that energy out. Now, since we have that energy and we, since we have a large reservoir of, of gas, in this case steam at a very high temperature, we can store this up and then present it to a steam turbine and get some power out of it and also drop a lot of heat out of basically the volcano and then kind of recycle it back through the system. It's just one way to kind of burn off some heat, get some energy out of it and make use of a very valuable resource, which in this case is a gold volcano, which is something I do have in my other base that I want to tap into. Actually, it's there twice. So I have I have a good reason to actually to, to get a system like this up and working. Now, we can use a lot of other things. We can use liquids, we can use petroleum, we can use super coolant if we ever get into that. Same sort of concepts apply. But the idea here, let me just explain it over here, how this system works on a, on a micro level is that I prime the system with a gas or a liquid. And when it runs through the gas reservoir here, all the temperature that comes in, whether it's hot or cold, adds into the total of the oxygen that's inside of this reservoir. So it won't rapidly change the temperature because obviously there's not very much coming in compared to how much is in there, but it will gradually change the temperature as as it's, you know, it calculates the averages, right? The benefit that that gives us is that the temperature that's coming out of this reservoir is always averaged. Look at this, it's all 24 degrees Celsius. And that's the same temperature that we have right here. So the nice thing is, is if we can heat up all the oxygen or all the gas or whatever we have inside this reservoir to a certain threshold and then offload all of that thermal energy at the exact same time, 
it might be more useful to us in the case where we might be running something like a steam turbine. Or in my other base where I have many different gases coming together and I just want to maybe run an air conditioning machine where if this gas is a little bit too hot, it goes to a cold biome. If it's too cold, it goes to a hot biome and it comes back at a, you know, at another temperature that then changes the average of everything. And once it's the right temperature range, I then empty it into my base. Or I heat it up very, very hot and I run it to a piece of equipment that's going to destroy that and convert it into something different. And there's a lot of the, there's a lot of those pieces of equipment inside the base. So that's the system. All right, so there's one thing that's wrong with this loop and it's this right up here. So the gas shut off is actually after where the energy is, the temperature is gonna be increased or decreased. Well, I want that to be before, so I get the average of the tank. So let me just, let me just deconstruct that. All right, so that's what I want right there. All right, so here's my example of how I'm priming the cooling loop. Uh, the one problem we could potentially run into right here is that if this loop is absolutely full of gas and there's absolutely no spot for the gas to go, so that there's no empty tiles, there's this thing's full, every spot in the pipe is full, the gas loop will not run. It needs to have an empty spot in order for it to actually flow continuously or perpetually without you know, a pump or anything like that and, and we get this free motion out of it. So how do you fill a system like this without causing all sorts of problems. All right, so the first key thing to note here is that I have a, a two to one gas pipe connection here. And it's not coming directly out of this gas shutoff valve. It's actually just two two pipes coming together. And therefore I get a tick-tock motion here. So this fills up and then it goes into the middle and then this stops and goes to the middle. So it's every other and then it goes down there. And since I have a gas bridge here and it's going to one of these white inlet gas pipes, that's gonna be priority number one. So if there's a free spot down here, and since this gas is flowing, there is, then it's going to go through that bridge first. So it won't go to the loop over here on the left unless this is blocked off. So once we fill this to the point where it's going to back up, this gas up here will now actually flow through the loop over here on the left. So we can see how the tank down here is slowly filling up over and over again. And every other tick or talk, I guess, the pipe is blocked. Now this is an important bit of, of bridge right here. Now what this bridge is doing is it's giving this inlet pipe here only one option for the gas to exit, right? So it gives the pipe a direction. So this can only flow this direction and from the left, this can only flow here. And that makes this motion work. If I take this bridge out, watch what happens. I'm sure you've seen this inside your base. I've seen it a bunch in my bases. Uh, yeah. What are you doing? It's not working. All right, so if I connect this, watch what happens. You see how this gas over here, it wants to go back to the right. And then it's like a little bit confused. And then it starts to flow in. So this side over here has just become confused. Now I'm only filling in from the left. And that's not what I want to have happen. So you can get all manners of different res of, of problems if you don't give your pipes, if you don't tell it what way to go. And the, the gas bridges or the liquid bridges are what you can use to give your pipe a direction. So understanding that connection, I think that's step one. Okay, so we're nearly up to the maximum amount of gas that we're gonna have inside of here. And what we'll see is this will back up and then it'll back up all the way to there. This will have to go to priority number two, which is gonna be this loop here on the left. And there it goes. Now what I have set up here is an automation signal, one that detects when the gas is flowing in. And I have a, that's running to a buffer gate so that when it detects this, what it's doing is it's shutting off the gas shutoff valve um, or closing it. So the gas cannot flow th through. And this loop here is sized big enough to take whatever extra gas that might be flowing in here and, and be able to store it over here on the left so that we have an extra tile or a couple tiles. So you can see that thing is just off, it's off, and then we detect it down here because it's going to get stuck. We're gonna build up a little bit of gas right there. So now this infeed is completely shut off. 
and the system continues to cycle as expected. Now, why is that important? Well, if we have this, let's say if we wanted this to be above its temperature, which it's 26 degrees Celsius, and we wanted it above 6.9, then a little bit of gas is going to come out of the system like that. And then if we go, we'll just let a little bit more flow out. And then it actually, let's say it, uh, the temperature or whatever condition was there is now false. Then the gas is going to go and flow back around. We have this gap that forms right here. And whatever's left over here is then going to flow into the system. So this bridge over here, since it's green, again, this is priority number two. And it's only going to come out if, it's, if there's a free spot and there's nothing else moving into the position. The reason I have a gas valve here set to 500 grams a second is so that this loop here just continues to always move a little bit and we're combining 500 and 500 into one kilogram until it overflows again. So that just keeps the system running all the time. All right, so here's a good example. I have a bunch of liquid inside of here. It's like very, very cold. It almost should be ice. And you can see that the temperature inside of here is being averaged out. You can see it's slowly going down, 14 degrees. And now it's going to be in the 13s. And I want this to exit at 10 degrees Celsius. So let's take a look at how the system runs. So you can see we're starting to approach the threshold now. We're at 10, 10 degrees, and now it's going to start flowing out. And you can see that it's just continuing to flow out and out and out and out and out and out. And then more gas is going to find its way into the system. So it went all the way down to 8.4. And now that temperature is slowly finding its way back up as more warmer gas is finding its way into the system. And now it's going back into the cooling loop. It's really interesting how that all works out because what we're doing is we're just kind of averaging those temperatures. So now really the system is just kind of starting to refill itself a little bit. And then it's going to run some more and the temperature comes back down. So unlike other cooling loops, where if we really wanted it to reach a certain temperature, we, I would stop it there and have a, a sensor right there, and all I'd be able to do is detect what's in that one tile. In this situation right here, I can really remote cool whatever and then sense the average of pretty much all the gas that's running inside of that loop while automatically refilling it without backing it up. So it's a, it's a different approach to the same problem albeit a little bit harder to do, <laughs> but at the same time, it gives you more options. So let's see what happens if I were to take this up to one kilogram. I would say this flow control is optional. I like it because it kind of allows you to combine the two different spots, and also if you have a very long run from your pump. And just like I saw in my other experiment here, you can see that the temperature of this gas reservoir is not changing at all. So unless they patch that at some time in the, in the future, and and make the gas and the reservoir all try to stay the same temperature, you know, then this thing would work a little bit differently. But right now, I mean, just cooling down the gas reservoir would just doesn't do anything. Uh, I'll show it to you right now. If I just use like a heat gun here real quick, we'll crank it up. We'll make it real hot. All right, so I mean, this is just ultra hot. The tank is like 62 degrees Celsius, but the liquid inside of it. Okay, so there's one last thing I need to make sure it works. I got a pump in here, a bunch of insulated pipes. I just want to make sure that the liquid tank works the same way as the gas tank. And if so, everything that we've already talked about applies. So I'm going to fill this tank with liquid oxygen or, or try. Come on. Don't be doing that to me. Game. Okay. There we go. That's really, really cool. Minus 198 degrees Celsius. Just take a look at the temperature overlay. Nope. Not a problem at all. Yeah, so look at that. Still negative 196 degrees Celsius. The tank itself is at 23 degrees. And all the oxygen around it is, is not having an issue at all. But if I deconstruct that, boom! There goes a lot of cold oxygen. <laughs> if I put a radiant pipe there, wow, watch this. It'll just explode. Whoa, major problems. So there you have it guys, a way to average out your temperatures by just running it into a reservoir, be it gas or liquid. So wherever that stuff's coming from. Also a method over here to fill something like a cooling loop and also empty it without ever backing up the system. 
So hopefully you guys found this video somewhat informative or helpful or just plain enjoyable. And if I've earned your subscription, then thank you so much for that. Stay awesome, guys. Peace. Brothgar out. So where, where can we use this? Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Ooh, think about this. If we run this through magma. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the melting temperature is like 2,000 degrees. We can heat up something like steam to that hot, and it's not a big deal. What can we do with 2,000 degrees?